reigning Royal Highness of Romance, Her Majesty Mary Fisher. At the tender age of 34, she has already penned over 30 novels. Passion, excitement. I think that it's important in a long-term relationship. And that's what I think women find from my novels. They, they find ways to make their man feel important and, and comfortable, to let him know that he is the man, you know, so there's no confusion. Ever the faithful daughter, Mary's never too busy to visit with her mother, who convalesces in style at the Golden Twilight Rest Home. Mrs. Francine Fisher is the proud matriarch of the Fisher clan. Ruth, why don't you go get some salt and some Perrier to remove the stain? Hurry, honey, hurry. Salt and Perrier, a man familiar with a woman's domain. I like that. <laughs> no, it's just that my wife's always spilling things. She's a bit clumsy. That's your wife? too bad. Yeah, it's too late. That stain is already set. Why don't we just cover it up? I insist that you send me the bill for the dry cleaning. <gasps> I'm sorry. That's very gallant. Now all I need is another drink of this dirt. Uh, I'm Patchett, Bob Patchett. Mr. Patchett. All the little families, mummies and daddies and Dear little children tucked away for the night. How lucky they all are. It's so kind of you to take me home. Absolutely no problem. <laughs> now, Ruth, be careful. I'm gonna drop you here, okay, hon? Shouldn't we take her to the door, Bob? Oh, that's all right, Miss Fisher. We just live up the block. There's no sense in making a U-turn, right, sweetie? No, and we still have such a long way to go. Yeah. It's another hour, oh, sir. I'm tense. Oh, okay. Yes, you're fine. Are you sure I'm not putting you out? No, don't be silly. 75 miles is nothing. Bye, sweetie. It was very nice meeting you, Miss Fisher. It was nice. Bye, hon. Drive carefully. My God, this is fantastic. You should see my electric bill. I'd love to. Do you have a moment? <laughs> Garcia. I waited up for you. It wasn't necessary, Garcia. You may go to bed now. We'll be all right. Yes, ma'am. Do you care for a drink? Love one. Buenas noches. You must lead a very glamorous life, Mary. I suppose so, Bob, but sometimes sitting here day after day banging away at my keyboard, writing can be so... Just dreaming. Oh, this is a dream. I don't ever want to wake <laughs> up. What? Mm. Oh. Wow. I know. What are you doing now? What are you? Oh, what are you? Oh. What are you doing? I've got to get home. Already? Yeah. My parents are coming over for dinner. I didn't 
didn't realize that you were still so domestic. Come on, Mary. I've got to go home sometime. No. No, you don't. You don't ever have to go back, Bob. We fell in love. It's no one's fault. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. No. I know when you married Ruth, you, you did it out of kindness and pity, and I love you for that. But, Bob, now, please, please, be kind to me. Be with me, stay with me, live with me. Mary, I want to. It's not that easy. I've got kids. And they have their mother. Ruth is blessed with those children. They're her pride and joy. It's not fair. What do I have? My whole life is so empty. Don't you say that. You've got me. <laughs> I'm tired of sharing you with her. I don't think I can stand this much longer. I want all of you. I know. Boy, I know. Andy! I found it! Daddy. Who let you in here, Garcia? Ruth, what the hell do you think you're doing? Andy, Nicolette, this is your new home. I'm sure you'll be very happy here. <laughs> Ruth, you are really depraved. Someone get this deranged woman out of here. Garcia! You take care, kids. And remember, no matter what, I love you both very much. Uh-uh. Ruth? Ruth? If this is your idea of a joke, it's not funny. Do you have a satellite dish? He knew her body as he had for a millennium, and with an ease neither of them had ever, ever known, he reached for her. Nub. I don't approve of you talking on that party line. Nothing else to do around here. Oh. Hello. Mary, hi. What's going on out there? You have no idea what I have to put up with around here. The noise, the bickering, the constant interruptions. I can barely even concentrate, let alone create. Andrew. Andrew, what are you doing? Andrew. Andrew, you leave little Juliet alone. Andrew, did you hear me? Andrew, throw that stick away right now. Right now. Mary. <laughs> 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 Tell the maid to do it. Get you. Shit. 
Oh, Uta! Oh, Uta! Uta, the children don't seem to have any clean clothes. Do you think that you could pass? Fuzzy has just shit all over the carpet. Uh, perhaps Miss Fisher would like to clean that up and Uta will do the laundry? No, 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 that's all right. Where is Garcia? In the swimming pool, where else? Garcia! <sighs> Garcia, what the hell do you think you're doing? I'm not really sure. Lately, I haven't been able to perform my usual services. Well, you're still the butler. So get in there and get to work. I may be the butler, but I'm not the maid. Bet she makes you earn every penny, huh? <laughs> now, where are the children? They're getting ready. Hey, kids, dinner's ready! Bob, we don't shout at the dinner table. Sorry. Here they are. Oh, don't you look. What's the matter with your clothes? <laughs> you did the laundry. Oh, yes. There must be something wrong with that machine. Where the hell is the chow line? Oh, good evening, Mrs. Fisher. Annie, why don't you get up and get you another chair? At ease, Gomez. <laughs> it's Bob. <laughs> Whatever. Why the hell didn't anyone call me for dinner? Well, we thought that you were having a little nap, Mother. We didn't want to disturb you. Nap? I was in the toilet the last half hour. I have such terrible constipation. Oh, she's great. Yeah. Well, here we all are together, having a nice family dinner. Mm -hmm. We certainly are. You know, Mrs. Fisher, I haven't told you what a wonderful daughter you've got. You did a terrific job in raising her. You never know it, the way she treats me, Miss Famous Writer over there. You would think a 41-year-old woman would have learned to appreciate her mother. You would think that a mother would appreciate the very expensive nursing home her daughter pays for. Mary, I, th I thought you were 34. Ah, she's 41. I got the birth certificate to prove it. Don't listen to her. She's getting uh, senile. Bullshit! I remember everything. I remember when you were just a teenager. I'm not interested in what you remember. Say, so shut up! You may clear the first course, Garcia. Oh, Paula! <laughs> Oh, darling. Mary, how are you? <gasps> I'm so sorry I'm late. I got stuck in the traffic. It's crazy time out there. Relax. <gasps> the usual, please, Henri. <sighs> what? What's wrong? In your hair. Oh! <sighs> the gummy bear. So. Tell me how much you loved my new novel and how much money we're going to make. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Mary. We extended deadline after deadline, waiting patiently for your manuscript. Oh, then you give us something called love in the rinse cycle. I mean, you don't love it? Mary, the love scenes are wonderful, but your heroine has two children and a husband named Bob. I don't understand it. And darling, what is this whole chapter on laundry? It's a metaphor, Paul. A what? A metaphor! Women always get stuck with the laundry. My readers will identify. Mary, in the romance business, you're only as good as your last novel. Fans are fickle. You will lose Don't them. Don't lecture me about my readers. 
Are you going to publish it or not? Not as is. Fine. You see, Mary, we're only Fine. doing this for your own... Fine. Time. I'm exercising my option. I'm going to take it to another publisher, Paul. Mary, why don't you take a day to think about this? You look tired. Go get a facial. Oh, there are you. Patronize me. And by the way, I think that Bob is a beautiful name. Taxi! Said you don't, darling. I've been calling and calling and calling. Where were you? Sorry, honey. That friggin' jag blew a fan belt on the way in. Oh, I am so beat. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking. Oh, that drive from the city is so long. You know, it might be safer if I spent a few nights in the office. What do you think? I think that you should take. Jesus Christ. We're going to sue the bastard. Hold on, Mary. Who are you going to sue? Your mother? No. I'm just going to wring her scrawny little neck. OK, OK. Let's just look on the bright side. Even bad publicity is good publicity. We're going to need all the help we can get when love and the rinse cycle comes out. It's you, but may I ask, what do you mean by that? I read the manuscript. Frankly, Mary, I'm worried. Why? Why, why is everyone turning against me now? First, Paul, I refuse to publish it. Now you tell me you hate it. I don't hate it. I just don't know why you strayed from the formula. Because I, in case you don't know it, Bob, I'm an artist. And ever since you came to my house with the children, my life has changed. And I must reflect that in my writing. Mary, <laughs> let's, let's not exaggerate the significance of your writing, OK? We're not talking about art here. We're talking about a product. A product? Yeah. What exactly do you know about literature, art, or creativity? After all, you are merely an accountant. Yes, well, accounting can be very creative. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it can be. Yeah, if I didn't keep my eye on the bottom line, you and all your artsy friends wouldn't have a pot to piss in. Ugh. You are so crude, so crude. How dare you insult my beautiful friends? Because that is the real world, Mary. So wake up and smell the cappuccino. No, no. Good. Where are you going, darling? No, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Oh, Bob. Oh, darling. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, 
yes. Oh. oh, I love you. I forgive you. Yes, I do. shed a tear to find his copy of Love in the Rinse Cycle lost in the garbage disposal. I hate to say I told you so. But you just did, didn't you? <laughs> Hello. Oh, here's a little something should cheer you up. It's like a fan letter. Ooh. You know what I'm thinking? I think we should go on a little vacation, just you and me. Have some fun. Go to the islands. I don't know. Have some Coco Locos, some Pina Coladas. Just relax, recharge your old batteries. God, I'd love that. What do you think, Mayor? You bastard! Oh! Mary! 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 Come back here! Please! You know you're the only woman I've ever been faithful to! <laughs> I took this job because I only have to cook and clean for one person and one dog. Then I get the mother, the lover, his kids, their dog, Miss Fisher. Up with his bullshit, I will not put. I quit. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let's get together. Stop together that! Love. Stop I it! Need your troubles behind <laughs> young lady and take off my dress. You're not my mother. I said move! It's for you, young man. Mother, go sit down! Go stay there. You're grounded! What is going on here? Ah! Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. I'm taking back control of my life, Bob. As long as you all are under my roof, things are going to be done my way, starting now. Mary, great party. Oh, thank you. Stephen, I knew you would come. Good to see you. Mary, Mary. Mary. you look wow. wonderful. Thank you. Mary, I'm good to see you. Mwah. What a success, honey. Everybody is having a ball. I just want you to know that as far as I'm concerned, you're still on probation. So just be nice to my friends. Enjoy yourself tonight. Going well. Attention, everybody. I'd like to propose a toast to the wonderful woman who put this fabulous party together. Mary, come on up here. Hit it, guys. Come on, everybody, give her a big hand. <laughs> Mary, you are the absolute best. And I'm the luckiest guy in this room. It's a great life, and things are only gonna get better. Here's to you, hon. Oh. Robert Patrick, I have a warrant for your arrest. For what? For fraud and embezzlement. Oh, I can't imagine. This is a private party. You can't just come. You have to leave. I'm sorry to spoil your party. Twenty-six counts of fraud and embezzlement. We're looking at two to three hundred thousand dollars in fines. That's a lot of money. I think we can handle it. Plus two to five years in prison. That's crazy.
crazy, Larry. You've got to do something. Mary, Bob, the solution to your problem lies in two words. Pay off? <laughs> no, Bob. Judge Phillips. <gasps> Judge Phillips. I have learned that Judge Phillips will be hearing your case, and that is very good news, for not only is he my father's old golf partner, Judge Phillips tends to be very mm, considerate towards white-collar criminals. Criminals? Who's talking about criminals, Larry? I'm no criminal. Oh, of course you're not, Bob. Just relax. Look. We know that a considerable amount of your client's money was somehow transferred into your personal account in Switzerland. Yes. Our defense will claim that the virus somehow crept into your computer, causing a mistaken transfer of money. We can show that the largest transfer of money came from Mary's own account. We all know that was a mistake, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So don't worry about a thing. Dad and I are going to play a few rounds with the judge this weekend, and I'll start laying the groundwork. You sure this will work, this computer virus and everything? <clears throat> Bob, I don't get paid $350 an hour to give bad advice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mary, you've been great. How the hell did a bum like me wind up with a wonderful woman like you? God. Oh, don't you dare touch me. Whoa. I think I was born yesterday. Hey, hey, what is the matter? the very hand that feeds you. You heard what Larry said. It was the computer. Computers don't have Swiss bank accounts, Bob. I want you out of my life. Oh, and you're fired. We are here with uh, Mary Fisher, and she is the former romance novelist. Now, Mary has just written a new book, and this is something that is very different. It's called Trust and Betrayal, and it's subtitled A Docu-Novel of Love, Money, and Skepticism. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Sally. It's very nice to be here. Now, let's see. This was about a year and a half ago that your last novel was published, and it was... A complete and utter flop. <sighs> <laughs> yes. We may as well be blunt. But the new book has gotten fabulous reviews. Mm, yes, it has, yes. And from the serious critics. Thank you, Miss Fisher. Pleasure. <laughs> Could you make it out to Douglas? To Douglas? With thanks, Mary Fisher. How shall I inscribe it? Would you sign it to Ruth? To Ruth, with thanks, Mary Fisher. Thank you. Would you inscribe it to Alain, please? Bien sûr. Your grasp of the postmodern metaphor is wonderful, Mrs. Fisher. Oh, no, no, no. Miss Fisher, please call me Mary. <laughs> 